I was once acquainted with one of the camp counselors, or at least one of them that did do camp back then. His name was Lee, and this happened about maybe eight or nine years ago. I can't honestly remember where it was, as I don't remember the location, but it was at a really popular camp area where camps were always held, especially at overnight camps. Now, the main thing being people were were at least around from 7 to around 15 years old for the campers. Counselor Lee would took a set of boys who were around between the ages of 8 to 2 to 12 years old. Not really 2, but you know, you get the idea. There were at least two boys boys per buddy and Lee was in this this camp one year when something happened. However, to make a long story short, Lee had been been canceling at camps for years, and this happened sometime when he was around his late 30s. He took a group of, of boys to one of the camp, camp areas, and as they were looking over, they ended up seeing that the camp was actually pretty gorgeous. It was a pretty big pot property with a lake to swim and etc. However, they were staying in one of the cabins, which they had to clean up and make sure it was all nice and ready. After they did that, they all got started on settling in. However, as they were settling in, laying in, one of the camp boys actually was looking outside. Two of them, in fact, looked over and said, Hey, there's something over there. Lee took a look through the window, but he couldn't really see anything. So he thought the boys might have been imagining things. It's true, Lee. I saw something. One of the boys kept saying, but Lee dismissed it as them maybe misseeing things or probably seeing some hikers or something. Now, at the time of this story, Lee didn't even understand what was going on in the outside world. However, though, that night was when things got worse. At the nighttime when all the boys were asleep, Lee was busy, see, just reading a book when it was around 11 p.m. All the other kids have gone to bed, and he was reading his book for a few minutes, minutes, when he all of a sudden heard something walking came around their cabin. Lee ended up look, hearing the sound and thought that he could hear something going on outside. He had a the, the curtains shut at the window, so it, whatever it was couldn't really see what was going on in there. Lee made sure the door was locked, and it was, so he ended up looking over for to hear the footsteps again. He looked outside, and about a few feet away, there was something outside. Now, he couldn't really see what it was, as it was too dark for him to see. He thought that maybe it might have been a mountain lion or possibly a bear wandering around, as bears are very common. However, though, Lee was not, not really hesitant enough to open the curtain, so he opened the curtain a little bit and poked his head out to see whatever it was. It was then walking past what seemed to be a little lamppost, where whatever it was was all black and and it had really long, long arms. Now, it was standing maybe about seven feet or so tall, and Lee had no idea what it was. He didn't want to risk calling it out, thinking it might spook him or something. But he ended up looking at whatever it was, but then t whatever the figure was took off into the trees, screaming, but when it screaming, it let out a loud roar. Lee honestly never barely got any sleep that night due to that. Of course, he told the other counselors about it, but they didn't believe him. They assumed that Lee must have saw a bear or possibly something else. Now, still to this day, Lee had no idea whatever it was it was in those woods. But after this experience and after the camping trip, he never went canceling for camps for a while. But he wonders... What was even out there, and what made that noise? That question still sticks with him to this day.
for some context, one of my my friends was acquainted with one of the kids named Jay. Jay was about maybe 13 at the time of this story. So I'm assuming this was around sometime in 2011 or 2012. Jay, since he was was 13 at the time, he was a very explorer who likes to explore everything. He was mainly the curious type of person. So he decided that he would take exploring to the next level. So he loved summer camp and he used to go to summer camp every summer ever since he was a kid. This was going to be his last year of going because his parents thought he was getting a bit too old for it. One of the camps that Jay was in at the time was in Massachusetts. He was in Osex, Massachusetts at the time. And he, and he, since he lived there, he got to see this one big ass cabin. This cabin was a pretty abandoned one at the camp. So he was at day camp with a few of his friends, friends, friends Marcus and, and Drake. Marcus and Drake decided to go explore with, with Jay when they found the abandoned cabin. It looked like it was old and it hadn't been used in a while. So they walked up to the door and surprisingly they, they opened the door to find it unlocked. They had no idea why it was unlocked. But they walked in and they ended up being silly by making some jokes and etc. However though... Marcus and Drake said that they heard what seemed to be like footsteps in the cabin. But, however, Jay said he didn't hear anything, so there was no reason why they would be afraid. However, though, Dre, a, or Drake ended up looking over to see that there was a shadowy figure on one of the bunk beds. It honestly looked like appeared to be a woman, but they couldn't really see it very well due to it with being so black whatever it did let out a loud cackle this honestly got Jay and his friends to get out of the cabin so they got out of the cabin and they ran all the way way back to the camp counselors they asked them on where they were and Jay gave a brief explanation about how that they had to use the bathroom and they got lost They didn't want to tell that they went into that cabin, as in fear of getting in trouble. What they experienced that day was completely paranormal. To give a bit of background information, this happened to someone named Steve, who I happened to be, you know, acquainted with back in 2015. Steve was taking a day camp vacation sort of speak to a pretty nice camp in rural Georgia. Now, he was about maybe 18 at the time and this was an adult camping trip where where every anyone between 17 to 25 are camping. Now I know it was a pretty weird group, but you know that's just how Steve was at the time. However, this happened a couple years ago and Steve honestly gets really worked up when he sees this. Now, to give a bit of backstory, Steve arrived at the cabin with a bunch of his friends and they were basically playing on their DS's and even just chat a little bit before bed. When it was lights out though, it was probably around maybe the 2 in the morning when Steve ended up waking up to hearing what seemed to be people walking. He honestly looked but couldn't see anyone. So he decided to go and investigate by bringing his phone flash, phone with his flashlight that he unplugged from the charger and headed outside. None of the camp counselors seemed to be noticing or hearing him leave, neither did his friends, so it was a good thing. However, as Steve was walking getting down the path, he heard what seemed to be some chanting. He didn't want to risk calling out to whoever was there as in fear of the camp counselors finding him out and he would be in trouble. He ended up walking over to see what seemed to be a lake. The lake was where they all swim, but as you can see by the glow of the moon, there were at least a couple people walking in the lake, chanting something. 
He honestly didn't even know who or what it was, but he stayed as far away as he could, not wanting to alert them. It appears to be that they brought out what seemed to be a woman, no older than 20. They realized that since she was dead, they dumped her body in the lake. Honestly, when he, when Steve saw this, he ended up going back to his cabin and remaining there for the day and prayed to God that they didn't find him. Thankfully, they never found him. And, and the next day, though, one of the camp counselors said there was a dead body in the river. When that was the case, they ended up, ended up cutting the trip short and the police and, and the authorities did search of this place. They were able to confiscate the body, but they didn't find those people who were in the water. Steve had a feeling that they were probably lake people, some cult, wanting to do some ritual with the whole lake. But he's never returned to camp since then, and he is still quite terrified about that experience. Let's take back to 1992. Now this happened to someone named Bradley, who was around 14 at the time of this story in 1992. Now, how I know about this story about Bradley is because his kid, which is her name was Dawn, told told a bunch of people at my school this story, and this honestly started circulating for a while. When Bradley was about 14 years old in 1992, something terrible really happened. Not really terrible, but something really freaky had happened to Bradley while he was at camp. Bradley was a very smart student and he was all top of his homework and he was always, always putting his time and effort into assignments. However though, this happened in the summer of 1992. Since Bradley was at day camp, he decided to go venture off into the woods one night from his tent. His two friends were asleep so he decided to go alone. As he decided to explore one of the woods at night, he had his flashlight and was careful well, not to wander into someone else's property. As he was walking, Bradley heard what seemed to be a crying sound. It sounded like someone was crying. It sounded like it was a woman crying, but no older than 18 at most. He, Bradley called out if anyone was there, but didn't see anyone. But as he continued to walk, he saw a hunting tower not by far, and he decided to go up and, and see what that sound was. As Bradley climbed up to the hunting tower, he took out his binoculars and looked around, but then couldn't really see anything due to the darkness. But then he saw what seemed to be a woman under a lamppost. She looked to be 18, and she wore what seemed to be a dress. A white nightgown dress, in fact, and she was staring out of the ordinary. He didn't even know why this woman was there and if she was lost, but she didn't look like it was any of the campers there. So he said, Uh, hey, are you okay? The woman all of a sudden looked at him and then took off running into the woods, letting out a loud shriek as she ran for the woods. Bradley honestly went back to his camp area and went back to his tent. He prayed to God whatever it was did not follow him back, so he honestly had a feeling that it might have been someone at the camp. However, though, he didn't even see anyone. But at the next day, he told the camp counselors about it, and they pretty much gave him a little bit of trouble, but... They got the cops and the authorities involved, and they searched for the entire campsite. There was no woman crying in those woods, or woman who screamed. Even a description Bradley gave the best. But however though, the story still sticks with him to this day, and he still wonders what was this woman planning on doing to him. Whatever they had planned, it was most likely not good. <laughs> 